Welcome to the live stream. So I'm running uh, the temperature monitor on this laptop that I'm using to test. And yeah, temperature's uh, doing okay with the... Yeah, let me just mute myself. Yeah, the audio sounds good. Yeah, so when I was running that intro video, it was running about 75 degrees Celsius. So I was a little concerned, thought maybe I'd have to turn on the fan, which, yeah, which would get very noisy. You may hear the fan from the actual regular laptop kick in. So this is a test using Zenity to do a GUI interface to the scripts that we made. And you could see those in last week's video and live stream. So I'm just uh, pulling up the settings because I am using the microphone on the webcam, which is over here, not the internal mic, it's this one. And I'm going to tap to mute it. And I was just, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to mute this. Because I don't have a way to mute it to sit there so you don't hear me like coughing or clearing my throat or anything. So this is one way to change the... This is one, sorry, this is one way to change the audio using FFmpeg. I'm trying to find other ways of doing that. But let's take a look at those uh, scripts. And I can also show you some issues that I've uh, had. So... So this is right here, this count uh, V3, that's the video that I, that you just watched if you watched the intro. And we're going to be using, showing this uh, GUI script and uh, it ran, that intro video ran this uh, intro video, but I also have a break video, and I'll show you where I kind of changed things up with that. The I put the stream key in this key.conf file. The loop, this merge is from the original FFmpeg video. I won't be using the microscope today or the RCA. This is a script that I'm playing with to try to fix the keyframe so that intro video isn't as choppy. The select script, the select comp, which I believe I showed in the previous video, the webcam and the what you're seeing right now, which is the X11 grab. So let's uh, go ahead and show that file. So like I said, the the screen key is coming from the key.conf file. 
It's using display number one, screen, same things as uh, previously. Using this uh, output resolution, which is the input resolution of the X11, which is, it really should be input resolution. I need to fix the naming of that variable, but I've cleaned up a lot of the nonsense that was on here. Um, using uh, HW plug zero. Now, I was having a little bit of an issue with that because the microphone I thought was on, would be at least on one or two. I thought zero was the internal microphone, but that's not a given. It could be on anything. So I was having all types of audio issues. And this is the audio filter that I'm using, and that seems to be working fine, and we're sending it out on a stream. But the video that we want to, or the script that we want to look at is this GUI, GUI.sh. So what that's doing is I have a selection A and a selection B variable. Selection A gets the input from this program Zenity. And it, I set the height, I set the width, I, it's a list, uh, the radio list, the title is select the video, which I'll show you in a moment. Type the input. Uh, the first one is the default is to end the video, which is true. The next one is just a video, which would run the break video, not the intro video. I may need to add an option for that, but the intro video should only run once. Uh, the X11 grab, which we're running right now, the webcam, microscope, RCA, HDMI. So from there, I'm running a, uh, case uh, selection, and it's a little hokier than I would like. I, it's not really formatted well because in the other scripts, it's running a one, a two, a three. These are all variable lengths, and Bash is particular about spacing, so I don't want to tab things out to make it even. For right now, this is working. So end is zero. So if the loop script gets a zero, it terminates. So that's the end of the script. Again, I may still make something as a goodbye script to run there. The video selection is seven, but the intro video is two, which isn't listed here. The X11 grab, which we'll run right now is number one. The webcam is three, and I'll talk about the webcam. The microscope is four. RCA capture and HDMI capture, I've had to put in quotes. And the reason that I need to do this is that Zenity, what is what ends up in the selection A is whatever text you put here. So, I believe there's a way to say, okay, this is the text. And then what we're going to do is have this value associated with that. But I haven't figured that out. Uh, at the end, i sending out what the value of B is. And then we're sending that to, we're echoing it to the select.com file. So with the except, with, which is the opposite of the read. So then when we go to, no, I don't want to run loop. I want to view it. And then here's the uh, loop item. 
And in this loop, like I said, it's if it's a zero, it terminates. And like I said, possibly putting an outro video at the end. And the select. Select.sh, because select.com. And this is easy. It takes that argument from the loop and sends it here. And these are all the items um, in no particular order. This it just happens to be the order I put it in. So we're there. So let's uh, go take a look at what that GUI script looks like or what happens when you run it. You run the GUI script and you get this pop-up. I believe I can set it so it can open in a different window or ha what have you. I have it defaulting to end. It just seems like a safest place to default to. It, you can only select one at a time. So the next thing we're going to do is the webcam, as long as I haven't screwed up anything on the webcam. And um, still having issues with the uh, the stream health. I need to probably play around a, a little bit with the codex. So you go ahead and you select webcam and you hit OK. And it's showing that it selected three. Okay. So what does that mean? So now if we cat or less, this shouldn't matter. Um, uh, select dot comp file. It's option three. So the next time that loop iterates, it's going to run a three. But why hasn't the loop iterated yet? The reason the loop hasn't iterated yet is that I still I still have FF MPEG running, and I'm going to probably have to edit that out. Yeah, I'm going to see if maybe I can use the blur tool. Yeah, so I can just go ahead and type kill or kill all FFmpeg and it'll kill that iteration and go on to the next. And that's going to be something that I'll do on a future video. But what I am going to do now is I have what I have. Yep, um, speaking English. Yep, I don't have the that loop running in any of these tabs, and the main reason I did it is because I'm still having an issue with the. X11 grab only doing part of a screen, so to not have it running on the screen, I decided to actually run this from an SSH, SSH shell on another computer. So I have that other computer running there, and I can see the status that it's on frame 17,300 uh, FPS is 20 and the Q is 2. I was getting a very high Q with the uh, intro video and that is not something uh, I'd spent several hours trying to fix that to make that more smooth but it just wasn't working so I've that's a 
project for another day. So now what I can do is I can have this run for whatever period of time. I can have this quit at any time. So what I may end up doing is making a script using exec and we'll uh, talk about that once I come back to the uh, this X11 grab screen. But let's uh, let's go ahead and switch this out over to my webcam and see how well this works. So I'm on the other computer. I have that terminal window open with the uh, loop script running. So once I hit quit, what it should do is load up the webcam.sh script and we'll uh, use the webcam for a few minutes. So I'm hitting Q now and let's see what happens. One. And we should be back. I don't know if we're back for sure. I'm going to go listen on the audio out. Yep, that worked uh, pretty well. Okay, so I have a uh, webcam. I have a... Uh, this is actually a homemade beer, or actually it's more of a group because it does not have hops in it. And I'm gonna just put this aside for now. So yeah, that's uh, homemade. I think I calculated it out at about 15% alcohol. And I am actually surprised that this didn't uh, crash because I had the microphone open. I'm going to run a test of mute again. Okay, so I've turned off the mute. And it should be back. Yep. I have audio again. So, just uh, thought I'd first talk about these 18650 cells. So, originally with my USB. Soldering iron, I went to try to remove this on the last live stream. It wasn't coming off. So during the last week, I took out my regular soldering station. That still did not get this hot enough. The cell felt warm, so there was some concern there. But I do have a... So, an actual soldering gun. I do not know what the temperature is. I have to dig it out somewhere and then also try to see if that works. If that does work, I'm going to try to maybe do that on a stream. But the issue with that is I don't know what the wattage is and what could happen with that is i rather not be on a live stream and then blow a circuit. I already have an issue with my unrifted power supply or an interruptible power supply ups, uh, battery backups. 
which is one of the things I wanted to do with these cells is instead of using the sealed lead acid is make one with these lithium ion. So that's still another project. I have this four of these cells and each of those uh, battery packs that I need to open up. And I think there's 12 boxes, 12 battery packs in each box and I have bought two boxes. So I have just shy of under a hundred of these cells. Each one is 3.7 volts. Well, let's go ahead and test that. I put that on the 20 volt and let's go ahead and test this. Yeah, little, well, I haven't charged these yet. I need to find my 18650 charger so between 3 and 3.7 volts and then I have this little solar panel and it's oh, and I think I get about a watt a volt and a half out of this I think it's a yeah well I don't have any uh, light right now besides this uh, light bulb. And those, uh, it's a standard LED light bulb just that way. And let me grab the box from them. Yeah, these are 16 watt equivalent bulbs. They are actually nine watts. I don't know if that's with that little plus there. It probably means about nine watts. And over here it says estimated cost is one dollar per year. That's based on something and we'll, we'll we'll do the math on that in a little bit but uh let me pull out one of these bulbs take a look at it so yeah, it's just a standard led it's the i think it's a standard base which is what 750 i think is what the base is called there you well, they're decent bulbs. What I had used previous before I purchased these bulbs is, let me see if I can get this out without causing a avalanche. Yay, I got it out with it. Is I had purchased these bulbs, which were able to be, I put it in the, I just have a standard lamp there and I can change how much light was coming here and how much was going up. So I got a more, more diffused light. Like you, if I hold this here, you can see the light is like shining off of the side of this and you may be able to see my screen. And, but after about, about a month, this died but these are not as durable and of course I can't read what this actually says because I don't have my other lights I don't have my ring light uh, set up usually I have a ring light right above the camera um, but I was doing something else with it in a different room. I was using it as a quick, uh, a quick uh, light source while I was in my attic. So, 
So this says it's a LED 28 volt, 28 watt. So this is about three times as much as those other bulbs anyway. So this is going uh, back and forth. We'll do some more uh, tests, but let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to run that GUI script again. And I am going to switch to the X11 grab and go back onto the screen there. Uh, I just want to set some things up. I am going to load up a spreadsheet and we'll do some calculations. I'm loading up LibreOffice. I just want to make sure I don't have anything that I shouldn't be displaying on. LibreOffice before I switch over. Okay. It's running LibreWriter. Let me see if I can open up a spreadsheet or. New, new spreadsheet. Yep, that's what I want. Okay. So I am. Make sure I have the right window selected. Okay, I'm switching. Okay, we should be over on the X11. And we're going to do some, some basic calculations. So, now let's say we'll do the item. The wattage, we'll put it into uh, kilowatts because we need to calculate the kilowatt hours. So, and then we're going to see how much, uh, how many uh, kilowatts in a day. And, spell that correctly. And kilowatts in a month and I'm just going to use a static uh, course per kilowatt hour and a total monthly cost. So I have my, well, let's uh, start with that first item, which is the, we'll go with the regular light bulb. And that was nine watts. And to figure out kilowatts is, we're gonna take B2, and divide it by 1,000. And then we're going to take C2 and times that by 24. So it is point. So it's a quarter kilowatt hour. And then we are going to take that number, which is on D2, and we're going to times that by, let's just say 30, which is a standard uh, number used for the number of days. It could be 29, it could be 28, it could be 31, it could be 30. We just want something standard. So the cost for this is going to be a static uh, item. I have my electric bill here and not counting what the initial charge is so the okay 
So the supply is 15 cents an hour and delivery is 13 cents, though that's 28 cents. And we'll get into that later. So 0.28, just as, like I said, a static number. And then the total monthly cost is going to be E2 times F2. And to run that light bulb with what it cost me for my electric is going to be a dollar eighty two. Okay. So let's see what we uh what else we can do with this spreadsheet. And let's that other light bulb. So folding light. I'll just leave it as that. Does it really matter what I call it? So 28 uh, watts. So let's should be able to just grab everything and bring it down. And I just need to change this to 0.28. Actually, I'm going to have that equal F2. And that should work out. So to run one of those other lights, it is five and five point six four or five thousand six why did I say five? It's five thousand sixty four cents to run it all the time. And I do leave this light on more than I should. I should turn it off at night. A lot of times I'm like, oh, I'm going back to my computer and I just go to bed. Now, this laptop we we're on, I'm on. So, I, I do have a, a RF meter, which I will show probably in a future live stream. It's leaving my car because I was doing some testing off-site so I can actually check what the power rating is on this charger with it charging the battery and not charging the battery and let me just go back over here to the uh, it's pulling in 12.12 volts but not drawing any amps. So I don't know how accurate that is. I don't know if that's with the battery, blah, 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 blah. But on the actual data plate on the charger, it is 19.8 volts times 2.31 amps. So that is a 45 watt charger. Excuse me. Yeah, that uh, that Groot is a little uh, little gassy. So let's pull that all down. So it's 0 0.04 kilowatts, one point uh zero nine kilowatts a day, thirty two point nine kilowatts for a month. So if I was to run this, which this is char plugged in all the time, but again, I don't know what the charge value is. It is 9.1, 9 cents a month. Let's just do some more uh, basic calculations. Now, Let's say a USB charger and I am going to say that it's, I'm going to 
with the same thing with the uh, laptop charger. I'm just going with the power out is the power in. Yes, I know there's inefficiency. I'm not taking that into account right now. So a five volt times, uh, let's say a 2.5 amp USB, USB power brick. Okay. Don't know what I did wrong. Okay, so that is yeah, five volts. Uh, yeah, so that's okay. So twelve, uh, twelve watts, and we'll go ahead and that is two dollars and fifty-two cents. If you leave that plugged in all the time. Now, if you have it plugged in and it's not charging anything, it's going to use less power. If it is charging, it's probably going to use more power because I didn't take into a inefficiency. I do want to test that. But I usually do have something charging on the power brick or whatever you want to call it in front of me. Right now I have my Amazon Fire tablet charging. Uh, otherwise I have my uh, uh, travel uh, power packs charging. But this gives an idea of how where you can use what you can use to make things more efficient and how you can Again, be efficient and what you would want and not want to put effort into correcting a deficiency. So the laptop, it, you may not want to leave that plugged in all the time if you don't need to. And well, I was uh, rearranging wires in my uh when i move the laptop over so i can uh live stream and still have the webcam set up i was unplugging that plugging something else in unplugging that but that right there is the most inefficient thing that we've tested um Now, I do want to go through and my other computers and see how much uh, power they use. Um, let's see. Uh, let's, let me see if I pull up a, a system report on my Mac. Does that have, what does that have under power? That has the peak power on delay, the sleep, the AC. Yeah, it doesn't give a, uh, a rating on what that uh, is. So I can either directly test it or look that up. And I have, I have, it's a Mac mini. I have, it's hooked up to two Samsung monitors and yeah. So don't have information on that, but I do have, I can get the data plate off of the monitors, I believe. See if I can see the data plates on the monitors. Is there a data plate for this monitor? I have so many wires here. That's in, yep, that's the Samsung data plate. And there is a lot of stuff here. Um, input. 
hundred uh let me see if I can get a picture. See if that comes out any better. And uh, flash. I'm gonna turn the flash on. I need to remember to turn that off then because I hate taking pictures with a flash. And I don't know if that came out. Okay, so it's a 25 watt. Oh, that's the output is 25 watts. So the input is, let's just say, so this is monitor. And that's, uh, let's just say 100 volts, because that's it says 100 to 240 and times 0.7. Let's see if we're close to 25 watts with that. Okay, so that's, that's uh, 70 watts of, yeah. A lot of inefficiency and I'm in future videos I want to go over uh, issues with inefficiency so each of those monitors let's see how much they cost I am going to guess probably about 12 bucks a year okay $14 a year I have two of those and they're on most of the time and again that is the probably the peak value I would need to test it to find out more so let's go back and run the uh, the GUI again and let's switch back to the webcam and that that's the only thing I have set up is the webcam and I think I got the right sizing for this so I can always play around with it. I may set it up so it every time it opens, it like might go to like this corner or if I'm using the X11 grab and putting a video in this corner, I may then put it down here in this corner so it's not on screen, but I don't think that really makes a big difference. So go ahead and switch the webcam and I am going to load the or I'm going to kill the uh, instance of FFmpeg and have it reopen and we should be back with the webcam so there's a bunch of things that I would like to do. And again, this is just testing and I want to try to make each of these tests for the live streams at least an hour. And the reason being is that I want to make sure that everything is running correctly so i'm just going to do like random arts and crafts things i think for some of these i want to do some gardening so i have a bunch of these little uh aluminum uh sheets whatever size they are uh grab my trusty ruler over here let's just uh see they are about 10 inches by by nine inches let's just say 10 by 10 and let me just try to readjust this camera so I get a little bit uh, a little bit better view and uh, I'm just gonna sit here I have and yeah, it's too far see try to readjust this let's see let's 
Close enough. Yeah, close enough. So I am going to make an aluminum foil ball as I just sit here and talk. And that leads me to something else that I was thinking of testing. And that was a the podcast feature that YouTube has. And I was discussing with somebody today about that YouTube's answer to that is a little a little odd. Because if it's on YouTube and it's a regular video on YouTube, you need some sort of visual something. But it's also they are being broadcast on YouTube Music, which doesn't have, I believe I haven't used YouTube, doesn't have a video portion. So what how do you, how do you answer that what is the issue i've seen some podcasts on youtube and somebody talking to the screen and so so they just they have their microphone in front of them and i i find that odd because i see the same creators doing other videos and they'll use uh, like a lapel mic or whatever other mic, but it's not like in the screen where I'd move my mic over, but I, one, it's the wiring. I have crap on my desk, but there was always like, oh, the microphone's in front of them. So it must be a podcast. That just doesn't make sense to me. Just like, okay, but th again, they need something visual on there. And you take a podcast and you put it to, say, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever. And you don't have those visual uh, items. So what I was thinking of doing is exactly what I'm doing right now is, well, I wouldn't be talking and doing it at the same time because as you're listening here, it probably sounds horrible and I'm going to only do minor editing to this live stream is I may just do something like this, like make a um, aluminum foil ball. I have probably several dozen of these sheets that I can just keep going and making this ball. So I would do this, record that, just me, sitting here, making a uh, aluminum foil ball, and then cut that audio out, strip the audio in, shot cut, grab a couple more of these. in shot cut, then record a podcast, edit out the podcast, which, uh, if I'm just doing audio, I don't know if uh, shot cut would be the right, uh, right thing to use. Probably Odyssey, which, uh, when we uh, switch back to the uh, X11, we'll go ahead and see if I have that installed. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing about 10 or 15 minutes on each thing. I'm going to run the intro video again because I wanted to show you something with that and and how you can just do a still do the direct uh, edit. But back to the podcast, so. I was brainstorming uh, some ideas. I have no idea what I'd want to talk about, but I'd also like 
right now I'm sitting here rambling because I want to do at least an hour and what about that 52 minutes right now what I can talk about for an hour without visual items so I'm thinking of doing between 20 and 40 minutes for a podcast episode which is a lot shorter but it might get some more people's attention and hold on to their attention a little longer and I'll keep it to instead of just rambling like I'm doing here just to essentially just run these uh this test and have one person viewing so I if you're there just go ahead and say hello in the chat if you're viewing this on replay and you don't see the chat, that's because I had to do an edit. So that's why I'm I'm deliberately not adding anything into the uh, chat right now. I gave a 10 minutes to live uh, notice. But like I said, I'm probably going to have to do an, at least one edit on here and as far as I know once you do a single edit you lose the the chat and it's it, it's disappointing and I wish there was a way around that but I goof so if there is something I have to edit out Let's see if you're watching this and our uh, replay, go ahead and see what I goofed on. But I'm still trying to figure out the best time for people to view. And I've been looking at my analytics and with my analytics, it's showing that I have people from the U.S., Brazil, Germany and India. So, well, again, I haven't looked. So, I um, figured this started probably, probably like nine o'clock in India, depending. I don't know if it has multiple time zones. So, like nine thirty. The this probably started nine thirty a.m. It's probably still too early in Germany. It's probably, well, I can look that up, what the time in Germany is. You know, let me just go ahead and look that up. Give me a second. So I, yeah, I'm still looking that up. Um, so I may need to do a better time frame. I came home. I had things set up. I went ahead and started it. Started. Uh, I set the, I think I gave myself an hour and a half once I got everything set up to do the live stream. Just gives some time for YouTube to possibly put this in someone's feed. So time in Germany really yeah. that's so yeah it's 7 30 in the morning in Germany so like it's still it's still pretty early so didn't really time that one out too well and I'm, um, yeah, for a Sunday morning, yeah, it's still too early. So let's see who sees this in replay. Uh, if you do, if you do watch this in replay, um, leave a comment in the, yeah, leave a comment because you can't use the chat and let me know where you are 
and what time you're watching. Yeah, the, the YouTube analytics are very, very sparse because you can, you can change your privacy settings on where you are with certain browsers. And I believe the EU has further restrictions on privacy. So I don't have a good uh, look there. Plus, a lot of people do, even if it's not necessary for changing their location, they do use a VPN and they'll just pick whatever country their VPN is in. Um, or wherever, like they may be in the United States, but they just pick a server in Europe just to further obfuscate their location. So yeah, it's been so each time FFmpeg resets, it's a whole new session. It doesn't know the previous session. So like this session has been running for just over 13 minutes but the stream itself has been running for just shy of an hour so yeah people are getting probably getting tired of me here and people are probably tired of me saying so that each time this runs through so I don't have a full time loaded in FFmpeg. And I can try to find some issues, just ways around that. That's why I was using the uh, the pipe command. Hopefully that didn't just get very loud. The fan just kicked in. Let me see what the temperature is. The temperature is doo -doo -doo, uh, 69 degrees Celsius. Yeah, this uh, the sensor uh, program probably has a way to switch that to Fahrenheit, but it's it doesn't really matter. I just need to make sure, keep it under 80 degrees Celsius and definitely not under 90 because that's when the computer will reboot. So let me go ahead and run. I have a bunch of windows open now. Let's go ahead and run the GUI and set it for the X11 grab. And we will go ahead and see if I have Odyssey installed. So hitting Q in three, two, one. And should have loaded again. Okay. So let's uh do EPT search. What is it? Odd SC. I'll just do Audi. Let's see how many millions of things come up with that. Yep. Pipe more. So, AD plugin, ALS tools. That might be a useful thing. I'm not installing that right now. Um, and yeah, and there's a GUI. Okay. Um, topology. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Um, more. ALSA items, nothing that I really want to deal with right now. Pulse audio, emulation. Um, yeah, not really something I want to be dealing with. I probably should have just ran this through grep instead of more. Okay, here. Odyssey, 
Ord A City. Okay, that's... But let's uh, not run it here. Let's run it through the software tool or software application. We'll search a U D A city. That's right. Okay. Click on that. And record and edit files. I've used this on other systems. It's been a while. So this might be what I can use to do that uh, the podcast audio. Not that I'm have enough scripts together to do that, but might as well install it while I'm here. And run that. So earlier on today, when I was uh, trying to get this up and I was running on the wrong audio input, which I need to get some time to really fix that. But with YouTube not being my full-time job, there's only so much time I can really dedicate to it. But I do want to learn more about how Linux deals with its devices because that will help me out in the long run too. So, yeah, this is still installing. Is that I was getting errors on both FFmpeg and on in YouTube Studios or YouTube Studio desktop where it was giving me issues with the stream health and I was getting a very very choppy audio and it was giving me an error about a the time delay which I find I find very interesting that an audio input device which affect the time And that, okay, that's not a good sign. And did I lock anything up? Do I, yeah. Mm. Let's see. May have to run system monitor. Just let's. I don't know what I did with this now. Now if I go to software tools, okay, let's see, can I hit? That's not good. Because I have no idea how to get rid of that now. Um, well, probably the easiest way to get rid of that is Kill Odyssey. Yep, that's the easiest way to get rid of that. Now, let me try running it. Oh. Don't need that. I already figured out the time and well. Let's, let me see if I just edit this. Clock, Brazil, I spell it right. Multiple time zones. Okay, outstanding. Mm, okay, so it's anywhere from 12.30 to 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's... I, I knew that I just well I knew that it was early because it's 1 30 here as you can see on the screen 
So let me close that and let's try to open Odyssey up one more time. Okay, it loaded more that time. I'm going to wait till this opens all the way before I, uh, hmm. Yeah, so, back to the podcast idea. If anyone has any idea on that, let me know. And something I need to probably leave a message on one of the, like, Creator Insider, uh, videos is what to do or how how does the stuff on YouTube music affect watch time for the YouTube partner program because right now I'm just I'd like to get into the YouTube Partner Program, especially if they come out with the lower barrier to entry for crowdfunding. I'd like to test that out. But I would like to know if you do podcasts and they're on YouTube Music, people are listening, not watching, but how does how does watch time and podcasts work and i'm assuming if you want if you load a podcast up as a regular playlist in youtube it's going to count as the watch time but if you run it through the youtube music and i'm assuming eventually they're going to have their own podcast platform or podcast app how that's going to work yeah odyssey does not want to open and i'm somewhat oh yeah i'm use. hopefully my audio on here is not so i am using what 57 percent on one CPU and 25 on another. Let's go ahead and kill Odyssey again. And let's see what happens. Oops, I don't want to look at the file system. I want to look at resources. And did it go up? I, I guess Odyssey wasn't taken up that. After I reboot, I'll play around with it. So... Yeah, let's just take a look at some of the resources here. This is, again, a laptop from 2011, so 12, 13 years old. Excuse me. Um, so it has, it has eight gigs. I ran a utility the other day that says you can put up to 16, but the specs from this laptop, which is an Acer, I believe it's an Acer laptop, it only says 8, so I don't know if I want to try changing that. Um, I used a 30 gig swap file or swap partition, I believe when I did the Debian bookworm installation I did uh, show that if not if anyone wants to see it go ahead and put it in a comment and I will take a take a look at it and see actually show how to create that or maybe find a video that shows it better than I can explain it and this is the network traffic. So, again, what I when I mentioned the uh, why I started using this FFmpeg is because it was using less resources, still using about half the CPU, 
but it was using less than OBS. And yes, I can get a new computer. I have other computers. I have other newer compute desktop computers. But this is a good project. Or at least I think it is. And it's a learning ability. I've learned a lot about bash scripts. And I plan on learning some more. And that's a lot of what this channel is is learning learning in the public eye and that's where I'm 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 leaving that as that I uh, I try to get as much feedback as I can from my audience uh the last comment that I did see was on let me let's see if i can pull up that comment um pulling it up on another computer because that's how i'm logged in notification bell yeah uh somebody commented up it's a pretty cool project since i tend to stay away from bash scripts i looked through Python scripting and how one might do it using WebSockets and PyGUI. Very cool idea. So I'm not, if you've seen my MicroPython, you know I'm not very versed in Python. And actually, that was one of the first times I've used Python. And MicroPython and Python, barely equivalent. So, what I actually want to use is to figure out with what would be the best way to use a uh, the libraries that FFmpeg has with the Um, so libraries FFmpeg has with other libraries for, because FFmpeg has the audio libraries, but not necessarily the, not necessarily the internet libraries and I'm gonna take a look at that probably in a couple minutes we'll switch back to the webcam again just because I'm trying to do about 15 minutes each side so let's go ahead and we'll save this and we'll call this uh, uh, power cost yeah, sure. That, oh, that was uh, me trying to calculate the uh, 18650s. Um, yeah, when we come back, maybe I'll take a look at that. So, close this. I'm going to leave that open for now. Don't need this document open. Close that. And we will go ahead and run the GUI. And switch to the webcam. And let's go back and I'll... Uh, Keep making this uh this aluminum foil bowl. Sounds like a good enough uh, plan. If anyone has any other ideas, go ahead and say so. But I still think we just have that one person viewing, which may be myself for all I know. I'm hitting Q now and it loaded, so you should be back. So let me know if you're getting any type of lag between that. 
I'm still getting the uh, H264 unsupported um, message, but that's not, I don't want to mess with the individual scripts to each of the individual input devices or input items and the yeah, devices. Um, methods, modes with this, uh, this test. Uh, the final test I am going to use is I am going to do a, uh, a kill all for FFmpeg. And the reason I am going to do that is because it does say that it died was it uh well what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a screenshot of the end where it it processes out and gives me the um i think it i'm not going to do a kill dash nine so i think it's going to be sig interrupt sig init and that is going to be that I'm going to feed that into the normal video, which I pretty much covered everything that that normal video is going to need in this live stream. But I could download the live stream, edit it out, and post it. Decisions, decisions. Usually by Sunday, I usually have a video recorded and I do my editing. And now that it is almost two o'clock in the morning, I don't know if I want to be editing in the morning after recording so I think if I record it fresh I think I'm gonna have less editing to do because I there's a lot less ums ums ohs uh wait huh come on um that I would need to edit out plus trying to find that spot I'm gonna have a hard enough time trying to edit out what I need to edit out in this video. Yeah. If you are watching this on replay at this point, thank you. Because this is a chaotic live stream and I don't expect many people to watch it. Hold on a second. Um, two, five streams. So the last one I did last week, uh, 48 people ended up opening that. Uh, I think the average time was maybe like eight minutes. But that's pretty impressive that eight people watched that live stream. Maybe more people will watch this because I actually did create a a thumbnail for this. Um, I may keep this thumbnail. Ah, oh, that's why. Well, I may edit this thumbnail and I may add the uh, Zenity. What's it called? The uh logo which I had already I've already created the thumbnail for this the regular uh, Wednesday video and it just have it may be Wednesday maybe Thursday whatever I get it recorded so yeah uh, hopefully I can get that under eight minutes it's just I don't need to show any of the other scripts it's just well I should show the select the loop 
and the, the GUI scripts. But those are, should be the only scripts I need to show. I've tidied everything up, as you may have seen. I didn't mention it into the scripts folder. So I, I'm trying to play around with project management a little better. So it's not as ludicrous. But the Bash script, my last week's regular standard video was just under 12 minutes long. And that was released three days ago and 112 people have watched it. So that's promising. I'm trying to, uh, of the FFmpeg videos, that is actually higher than almost all of the other ones except for um where is it where, the actually the first video the part one of this uh series the which has 166 views and that's over a month ago so this is promising that this one got 112 views the one before that with the pipe which was kind of useless it's well it's not useless i have it didn't do what i wanted it to do but i can do i can see how i can work with that especially if i do start going with c plus plus it gives me a better idea of how pipes work with it that only had 46 views when i did the the part three with the inputs that had 56 views so still better than my normal videos or previous videos but not great uh when i did the intro video to x11 that has just over 100 views the first video was 166 and then my first FFmpeg video, well, when I merge the files, that still just has 86. But then you start looking at my other videos, and the Inkscape video has 87. That one was doing pretty good and sort of just stalled. The 100th video. There was no reason that I just, I wanted to make some type of milestone video and I, I don't blame people for not watching that. Uh, 88 people watched the, uh, GIMP video, the GNU image manipulation program. And I've actually had a fairly good viewing for the Debian 12 bookworm so that one i'm uh, i've been going backwards using this so the first video for that was a less than three minute video showing how to download the video and burn it to a dvd not a complicated uh thing but 148 49 people watched it um it's still getting views, so, okay. The next video was installing the base system and SSH. That had, that as of today, after three months, it has 515 views, which I'm happy with. It'd be great to have more, but it's, that's a good uh good viewing and that one if you if you search debian bookworm or debian 12 i forget which one or both and google duck duck go i don't know about bing or on youtube that is one of the that and the gnome video are the two that come up first so that I'm, I'm getting a good viewing on that. 
And once Debian Bookworm comes out of testing and goes into stable and actually is called Debian 12, I have a funny feeling I'm going to get a big boost of views there. So I may want to make more content handling that. The next video was with the installing uh, GNOME uh, desktop environment and that has 670 views so that's again very uh, I'm very happy with that. The next video was installing Shotcut, Inkscape, OBS and GIMP and that has 168 not I'm, I'm not disappointed on that for what it is. And it was literally what I just did before. It's just running the install. So I don't... That one got repetitive. So the um, retention on that probably was bad. But let's let me take a look at see other videos. Well, let me see... So let's just, as I'm doing this, I'm just, I'm just playing around looking at my channel. So I have 1500 views for the video I made playing an Angry Birds clone on uh, my NES, uh, NES classic clone. So that, that was... That one shows up randomly. That one, actually, people have put that one in playlists. So that one has a pretty decent um, evergreen content just because it's something strange. Like there's an 8-bit Angry Birds. And if you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and take a look at the channel. Or if you haven't seen any of these videos, go ahead and take a look at the videos on the channel. Um... The in setting up the MicroPython with the uh, DS18B20 sensor has uh, 1,200 views, so that's that's pretty good. Um, the setting up the C and C++ software development kit for the Raspberry Pi Pico. 800 something views, 817. That's pretty good. Uh, 749 people uh, checked the video to change their uh, batteries on their smoke detector. That's good. And yeah, going back there, um, another video was. So I made two videos for how to unbrick a Raspberry Pi Pico with MicroPython. And the first one I made which was basically the simple way to just clear out your, it basically clears out any data you have on your Raspberry Pi Pico. So it, it basically just blows everything out. So if you have anything saved, it's dead. That has 655 views. I did figure out a way using a hex editor to correct that and be able to save your files, but that one only has, well, uh, 230, 293 views, so just about 300 views, so that's what, uh, less than half, and that video is a lot more, um, more useful because it's, it's a unique way of, uh, looking at it, so, I think I did uh, try to optimize the uh, metadata for that, but and it's just other other videos with the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. I need to probably fix that uh, that playlist. Um, that playlist has way too many videos in it. It has. Survey says 26 videos. 
So that that's I think too much. I I don't know if people are gonna want to watch that. Whereas the Debian Bookworm has the five videos. The YouTube Tools has nine, but five of those are this FFmpeg project. So I don't know if I want to have t these videos in two different playlists. So, but I did in almost all these videos, I've said that it's the FFmpeg project of my YouTube tools. So if I didn't leave it in the playlist, that might be an issue. I don't know. People really aren't watching the playlist, but whatever. Yeah, so, um, and then just other random playlists. And hopefully a podcast soon. So. Oh, do not want this computer to go to sleep. Yeah, I need to remember to take a look at it. So, I'm trying to figure out if I sh yeah, I'm going to be going back and forth one more time. So, what I'm going to do right now, well, I'm going to switch over to the X11. So, once I'm in the X11, I'm going to show you what I want to change. So, let's uh let's let's go back over there. Yeah, so X11 grab. I could just label it desktop, but so let's go ahead and switch over. And this should switch over fine. So some of the so I'm getting a message, thread message queue blocking, consider raising the thread queue size option. Current value eight. So It's it, this is working. It's so I don't know if that would make things just a little better or just this or just that. So leaving that as is. So Right now, what I am probably going to do is just uh, show you that, like, so like I said, I made this scripts folder, and I do have these videos here just because I didn't want to, in the like intro and breakdown video, I didn't want to say over here with the video, I didn't want to say like dot dot slash and then videos, but I may do that, make a separate videos item. And so for the X11, this this is the X11 video which one yeah no for the okay so for the intro I am doing the lib x264 and yeah this has a bunch of tedious stuff okay so I am not doing the lib x264 for any of the others, but, or this is for the X11. So I'm not getting any, it's the stream health is saying excellent. So don't need that. And then the webcam. And I still want to figure a way to fix this. So what I may do is I may map it to um, 
that's it. Linux is it four? Oh, is it L four? What was it called? It's gonna. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's too. It's too early in the morning. I am. Draw. My brain is drawing a blank right now on what directory I want to find. What directory was it? It's in the dev directory, I'm almost positive. Oh, V4L. Yep. V4L. And then by, by ID, is, yeah, this, yeah, so by ID is what I would want. And, and you can see how this is, this is mapped. So I could try to map directly to here. So the webcam I'm using is this general webcam. But the, actually, the what the audio I'm using right now is coming from this webcam. Because I didn't want to hook up the, the microphone and rerun wires and blah, 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 blah. So I'm just using the webcam's audio, which sounds fine. And... This uh, Chinico webcam is the built-in webcam. And why that one isn't the default, because the cables were connected when it booted up and just randomly set this. So what I could do is there is a way, which I need to look into, is UDEV. I don't think that's a separate directory. I believe it's, you yeah, know, there's no UDEV. So, let's see, man, UDEV. Let's see, can I find? So, dynamic user management. So, I can take a look at this and try to figure out how to map those correctly. So,. how this works and what files and doing symbolic links and conditional architecture. And then what would happen? I need to figure out what would happen if I have it mapped to a device that's not plugged in. Go to, yeah, that's, yeah, I can, I can get into a whole thing on go to for items. So I need to look into this more. I need to make sure that the kernel set up. I'm probably going to check out, oh, slash etc udev rules. So let's, uh. Uh, you dev, let's see what's there. Um, rules. Vbox add rules. Okay. Yeah, virtual. I can't. I think I have to d compile the. Recompile the kernel to get. Virtual box running. 
I'm going to wait until Debian uh, Bookworm is stable before I start playing around with the kernel by then. Well, they already did the soft lockdown on the uh, um, why? Yeah, it's two o'clock in the morning. That's why my brain isn't working. Uh, that distribution, um, catalog, the software catalog. They did a hard set. No, they did a soft um, lockdown, and right before it gets released, from what I've looked at in the past, it should uh, get the hard lockdown right before it, over the summer. I'm thinking, looking at history, um, it's usually July and August when they do a new release. So let's see. Debian... Bookworm timeline. So take a look at the release information. Let's see, does it have the time frame? No, it does not have the time frame. Generic release notes status page. Let's take a look. Oh, the release is planned. Okay, so that just came out three days ago. Okay, it's been a while since I've looked at it. Okay, so the soft freeze was in... Uh... February, so let me see. Uh, I found the calendar, da da da. Starting on the 12th, small targeted fixes. Okay. So then the hard freeze was uh, right before St. Patrick's Day. I guess I missed that, what, that uh, announcement. And then just three days ago, they announced the release the planned release for june 10th so just over a month from now um hmm. release party let's see so i may want to make more content for debian bookworm so or associate more uh feel free to add a release party Celebrate Debian. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Brazil. Okay. That's interesting. And that is also interesting that Brazil is one of the countries that shows up uh, often in my, uh, as my users or as people that watch my content. So, oh. hmm. In the last week prior to the freeze, testing will be complete. Is this with the, okay. So full freeze date. So the full, the with the release set, it's time to announce full freeze date. Okay, of the 24th. So after that, at, at a, cause, Oh, let's take a look. I've done a update um, before I started the stream. Probably, probably like eleven thirty. Let's see if there's anything new. So I ran a apt update uh, a little while ago. Like I said, right before I started the stream, or right before I scheduled the stream. So around 11 o'clock, I scheduled the... Yep. And what do you know? There's new update. So I'm guessing... 
list. Upgradable. Let's see what's there. LibGeocode and Girl 2. Yeah. So, but I believe I'm, I'm just going to assume that after the 24th, it's only going to be security update until the release date. And then I'll get to a more uniformed uh, pattern. Let me just get on. Don't need to be watching that right now. On my Debian Bullseye virtual machine. Let's see if I do an apt update on that machine. Did I spell my pet? Nope. I fat fingered the password. Let's see what uh if that has any updates. I want to dig out one of my other laptops from the and take a look because I once this is released, then Trixie will become the standard or the the testing. Uh, yeah, so then, um, so Bullseye is the current release, and that was, so that was 11.6. And that was my radiator uh, popping because it was had the heat on earlier today because, well, reasons. Okay, so let's, let me just go to Debian.org directly. And OBS is the only thing upgradable in on my uh, bullseye machine and that actually on that machine I actually am using it from a an Ubuntu, un, Ubuntu uh, can't talk Ubuntu uh, repository so that one doesn't update correctly and I don't know. Uh, that one, that machine also has Wayland and not uh, X11 on it. Okay, so here's the website, and let's go to yeah, let's go to download. That should, should get me where I want to go, I believe. Maybe. No. People, security updates. Uh, yeah. I don't come to this website enough to know where things are. I just usually just download. So, Micro News Planet. So, I don't know if. I want to do Trixie on another computer. If I want to keep this laptop with just testing and use Trixie, or if I actually want to try SID, which is the perpetual unstable version. So let's see if I do a search for SID. What, what, because I think S I D. So I think. Bookworm is using uh, the kernel version 6.1, and I think SID uses 6.15. Unstable distribution SID. Uh, Alice is unstable. Ba, 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 does not. 
get security updates in a timely manner. Okay. Yeah, things got to rearrange. So now, what I what I said I wanted to try to do. I'm I'm gonna. I just realized what I haven't done yet, and I'm gonna leave that open is I have not tried to run the intro video again. So I'm just that one I have to do. I have to nope, not the script. I want the comp file. I manually have to change that to two. So So I'm yeah, I'll do the upgrade after the stream. So yeah, too many things. Just run the GUI. So after the GUI, I'm gonna be coming right back to here. So I'm going to run the intro video. And as soon as I start that intro video, I'll hit OK. And the intro video has a unique thing with everything that everything else doesn't, is it has a set time. It's a 61 second video, which I could make it exactly a minute, but it's not worth it. So it's a 60 second video, and as soon as it goes, it terminates FFmpeg and then just the loop continues. So I need to, within that 60 seconds, I need to tell it to do something else. Otherwise, it's just going to keep running that video over again. Which if that video ran smoother, I would do a, uh, I would do a test with it and see have it run a couple times and see how it goes but as you if you're watching live which i don't know how many people are watching live uh, analytics it's actually telling me no one's watching live now which is just weird that's just yeah that's just strange okay let me go ahead and Reset uh, FFmpeg. It should load that video up, and then we'll be back on to the uh, back here to the desktop environment. See you in. script I think I don't know if I made an alias I think I I think I key mapped and I can't remember how I set up the key map um is that something over here I set up hotkeys so with the keyboard um special key entry maybe disable view custom shortcuts was that what I used Custom shortcuts, let's see. Nope. Because I set up something to so I can like raise and lower the audio volume. And I don't remember where I put that. Where it was, was it with applications? Um, 
Yo, what's a key map? Um, maybe it was a specific program. Yeah, I don't know. Not really uh, something that needs to be done right now. But what I want to, I'll close this. What I want to show is a uh, note. So I've covered this before. Right now I am over here with the, and I stopped using, I stopped naming the scripts with the version I was on. So like the GUI is it X7 GUI. I just, when I created everything, everything has a specific purpose and I, I'm, I'm working on a version control. I I need to I need to get this onto GitHub is what I need to do, but I can't remember how to log into GitHub at this point. So that's where I am right now. I'm still this is the the test. So this has been the well the GUI is running fine. Um I need to make a correct break video so that and I need to fix the videos but that's not part of the GUI. The next uh, after I get that video all done is trying to get it to kill FFmpeg so I'm gonna do that test today to see how that uh, how FFmpeg gets killed. So I wanna, I really wanna do it in two different modes. Cause I don't wanna just kill it and that's the end of the stream. Because that's not very useful. So what, what I may do is I'm going to I'm not actually going to use the GUI. I'm going to use. I'm going to hard edit the uh, the comp file to use the 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 countdown video again. So that I'm basically going to run the countdown video, and then from the countdown video, I am going to just run the run end. So it's going to have the countdown and then end. But if the kill command doesn't work correctly, that might just be where the end of the video is. So I am, I've rambled on for two hours. Um, there was a couple other things I wanted to uh, try to do during this live stream, but that didn't work out. Oh, and before I go, so the, after that, it's I want to try to do um, overlays. I want to try to set like a, maybe something simple and just run a, uh, a logo in the corner. Do like uh, the watermark. Or um, a actually like a border, maybe, and let's see what it would take to make something interactive, possibly. Or I need to read through the documentation more and say, okay, so this screen right here is 1366 by whatever, 7 whatever that number is scrunch it down even further and make it like 1280 by 1280 by 1024 no 1280 whatever and then have a border for the rest of that 300 or make the actual resolution the uh, 1920 by 1080, the real 1080p. That's, uh, let me, again, losing, 
track so the max resolution I can use on here is 720 so I need to set the resolution for the live streams to 1080p and that might help some things so so then there's the overlays and then I think this is just I may keep kicking this down this can down the down the road a little bit and this was originally supposed to be the uh, the last week's video but I I don't have a neat it didn't work the way I expected it let me let me leave it at that and then with this GUI and stuff and what I actually would like to do with the FIFO is to do the FIFO from a, another machine. So what I would do is put a FIFO in a shared directory and then say from my Mac, I would get FFmpeg on my Mac and use a webcam on my Mac to stream into the FIFO pipe and then have the FIFO pipe on this laptop pull it in and send it to YouTube so that that's where the FIFO pipe may uh, may have a benefit with um, doing remote um, information or the other thing is if I can get C++ to work or C or C++ and maybe make a script to take the information from the FIFO pipe out to the RMTP server. It, it, it's a bunch of other items, but so let's, uh, we'll close this out. I selected on this window. Okay. So I'm going to um, change this to the that two, which is the video, and I am going to. So I'll save that, and then I will. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'll run the GUI here. And have that standing by for end. But I am going to kill all. And this, the reason I don't want to use the kill all is, again, if I use that FIFO pipe and have multiple instances of FFmpeg running. So I want to try to find a way around that, which is a... Maybe next week's video, maybe the week after. I, I literally was just looking at it and I can't remember. So either way, this is uh, me signing off. It's either going to go to when I hit. Oh, I need to get ready to do a uh, screenshot because as soon as I hit kill. Actually, what I'm going to do is record it. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense is I am going to do a screen record, uh, da, 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 new screen recording, and Built in, non. Oh, did I unplug? Yes, I unplugged my microphone from that machine, which is fine. I'll just use built in. Oh. Okay. So that is going to be just. Should just be this block here. Yeah, if it records, it records. Okay, I'm going to start recording there. And then I'm going to hit kill also. I hope to see you back on a live stream again soon if you've uh, watched this far. And uh, 
leave it in comments when a good time would be and I'll try to fit that in. So thank you for watching. You have a great day.